everybody. Happy Saturday to you. Thank you so much for joining me and spending part of your Saturday with me. I've got a really fun project for you guys today. I'm excited to show you this one um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's just beautiful. But number two, I love pearl knotting. And anytime I get to show another person how to do this and they um, succeed at it, it is just, it's one of my favorite things. I love to see that aha moment that happens with people when they use the knotter tool to create um, knotted projects. And you can do this with pearls, you can do this with anything. So once you learn how to use the hand knotter tool, you're gonna be making knots on everything. I promise you, I promise you. And the reason is because the drape that happens, the feeling that happens with a knotted piece of jewelry is so different. It just kind of feels luxurious. It has a beautiful, like it has just a great drape to it. It just feels very silky and smooth because you're using silk cord. Uh, that being said, you can actually use any kind of cord that you want to. So just because I'm using silk and pearls doesn't mean that you can't use other things to recreate this project or make your own. The most important part of today's project is just the technique itself. And I'm really hoping that you guys will enjoy. So without further ado, let's get down to it, shall we? I'm going to give you a rundown of the things that we're going to be using for today's project. And then we are going to get right into it. So a couple of things that you're going to need for today's project. And probably the most important thing is the hand knotter tool. This is the beetle on knotter tool. Uh, for those of you who have never used this before, I'm going to show you step by step how to use this. It is not intimidating. It's not hard. I promise you, if you will follow all the steps that I give you, you're going to be using this like you've been doing it for your whole entire life. I promise you, I promise you. Super fun, easy to use. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the most important parts of our project, other than the tool, is the silk thread that we're using. So we are using 100% silk thread beading cord. And I get these little packets just like this that Beadalon has at Michael's that have a couple of different sizes of them. So this one comes with a six, two size fours, and a two. Now, why does this matter? This matters because you're all all holes of your beads, whether they're gemstones, pearls, or glass beads, not all holes are created equal. And so some things are going to have larger holes and they're going to need a larger cord. Whereas some of your gemstones and pearls are going to have um, very, very tiny holes and those you're going to need a smaller cord for. So it's really cool to be able to pick up this pack that has the three different sizes in it. That way I know that when I get home with my beads from Michaels and my silk that I've got a combination here that's going to work one way or another, right? I've got a cord that's going to fit with whatever beads. I'm going to be using the number six for today's project. The pearls that I'm using are some of the bead gallery pearls. It was the two strand on the little card and they are just freshwater pearls, but the size on these is eight by nine millimeter potato pearls. They are the perfect size for the number six cord. Um, and I tested them ahead of time just so that we know. I definitely recommend doing that before you get started. Um, sometimes you'll think that the cord is just fine, but when you go to make the knot, the knot is not thick enough and it will slip through the hole of your pearl. So you always want to double check and make sure that you have the right combination of beads and the size for your silk. And again, we're using silk for our project that has a needle on the end of it, but you can use any kind of cording that you want. I just find that the silk cord that has the needle pre-attached to it is very, very convenient. It's a really thin needle, so I know it's going to fit through a large number of gemstones and pearls. All right, another couple of things you're going to need. Hypo cement, this is your best friend when it comes to pearl knotting. This is a great rescue tool. Um, it is also going to be really handy for creating our knots that we're going to put into our little clamshells. So these are our little clamshells. Now, these are most people call these bead tips. Uh, some people consider them crimp covers. They're really not a crimp cover, but it definitely is a knot cover. We're going to be using these just for that purpose, to cover some knots that we're going to create at the end and the beginning of our project. You're going to need a little bit of leather for this. I've got about 12 inches 
of this beautiful mahogany colored leather. You're gonna need a button and I'm using a shank style button. However, somebody asked me before class today if, um, if they didn't have a shank style button, if something else would work. You absolutely can use just a large bead for this if you want to. Um, and you don't have to have a shank style button. I just prefer them because it has a great little place here that is very convenient to add a jump ring to. And then the last couple of things you're gonna need is a decorative ring. This is gonna be part of the design. I'm gonna add a charm to mine, this little bead landing heart. And then of course, we're gonna need some findings. And so I use my beetle on findings variety pack because I've got some jump rings that are in some different sizes. I don't need any of the clasps that are included in this. However, it's handy to have these because I can just have this sitting on my desk or I can throw this into my bag if I'm gonna be beading elsewhere. So they're really, really handy to have and you can refill them if you want to, which is also super cool. Okay, so let's get started with the basics. We're gonna create a very, simple, knotted, straightforward strand. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use the bead tips at the end. This is not necessarily the traditional style for creating knotted pieces, but this is the most simplistic way to finish and begin your knotted um, pieces, okay? There is a different way where you use some, um, what is it called, French wire, sorry, the word was getting away from me there, French wire or a wire guardian, but today we're just gonna be using the little bead tips for this. So to get started, you wanna take your silk thread off of your cord, card, not your cord, comes on a little, hold on, where did it go? Comes on one of these little guys. You wanna take the whole thing off, and I use just straight off of the card. I don't pre-measure. Uh, that way I don't cut anything. And if I don't use up all of the silk, then I still have my needle attached and I can use what's left over for another project. So always use the full length that you have because you'll have leftovers and you wanna keep that needle on there. So you wanna take that off of the card and then you just wanna kind of pull it a little bit. You don't have to pre-stretch this or do anything fancy with it, but I do like to pull it just a little bit just to kind of get the kinks out of it where it has been folded on this card. But for the most part, that's, that's really about it. I just wanna to try to get some of those little, those little bins out. Okay. So the very, very first thing we want to do is we want to come to the end of the silk that does not have the needle on it. Okay, just the free end. And we want to tie a knot. I like to tie a surgeon's knot so that it is a little bit more bulky than just a regular knot, but you can do just a plain overhanded knot if you want to. So I'm just going to take the thread and loop it around my fingers. And I'm going to take my end once and twice, that's what really just, that's the only part that makes this any different than any other knot. And then I'm going to pull. And I just wanna cinch that knot up nice and tight. And you can see how it makes just a little chunkier knot, okay? Now we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna take one of these little bead tips and we want to thread this on to our cord so that when it comes down to the knot. So I wanna thread through the center of this, like through, th whoa, if I can hold on to it. I wanna thread through the middle of this, okay? So that when it gets down to the knot, it's gonna be able to close over the knot. So you can see it's kind of like a Pac-Man mouth open, right? It's gonna close right over that knot when we get it down here to the end. So you can see now that knot is gonna sit right in that little clamshell. This is where you want to add a little dab of the hypo cement. Couple of things are gonna happen when you do that. It is going to not only secure your knot, but it is also going to help to hold your little clamshell together. Uh, it doesn't really need any extra security, but I feel like for whatever reason, it just makes me feel like the jewelry piece is more secure. So I just add a little drop of this to the knot itself. And then I'm gonna close that back. We're gonna need this again later, so don't put it away, okay? Now, you can go ahead and trim off the, the remainder. I like to go ahead and close my clamshell first and then trim off the excess. So the first thing I do is I kind of squeeze it closed with my fingers and then I'll come in with my pliers and finish closing it. 
just by kind of pinching on it soft, gently. You don't want to pinch too hard because you don't want to flatten it. And you also don't want to mark up that metal either. You want to keep it scratch free if possible. Okay. So now I've closed that over the knot and I still have this thread that's coming out. Now we want to trim that off and you can use your scissors, your nipper tool, whatever you like to use to cut your threads with. And you just wanna cut that as close as you can to that little clamshell, okay? All right, now we gotta close this up so that it doesn't get hung on our work as we are knotting our pearls. If you just leave this hook open, you're asking for trouble. So we wanna go ahead and close this up. We're gonna use our round nose pliers to do that. We're just gonna grab the very tip of that and we want to roll a, this into a loop. Now, I like to try to double roll it if I can, just because I feel like it gives it a little extra security. That's probably not so, but <laughs> you just wanna close that and make it a closed loop because later we're gonna add a jump ring to this, okay? But don't leave that, don't leave that hook out. It'll get hung as you're going and it may pull it completely off. So. Definitely want to do this before you get started with anything else. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to thread our pearls on and we're going to thread all of the pearls on now. We're not going to do one at a time. We're going to thread on as many as we think it's going to take. Now we may need to add a pearl at the end or take a pearl away before we knot it. But for the most part, we want to go ahead and guess how many pearls it's going to take to create the length that we want of our bracelet. So I have laid out all of my pearls here and I'm gonna go ahead and thread these on using the needle on the other end of our cord. Okay. And if you double check before you get started, you don't need to use a bead reamer on any of your pearls. That's, I always wanna to try to thread my pearls first before I commit to whatever design. So then that way I don't get stuck with a pearl that I can't get the needle through and have to tear everything apart, right? That's save yourself the frustration and check all of your beads ahead of time. I know it's tedious, but it is definitely worth it. So we're gonna thread all of these on notice I haven't moved them down yet. They're all sitting right here <clears throat> where I'm working. We'll move them all down together here in just a second. So I'm gonna thread on how many I think I need for this project. Now, what you need to take into consideration is that number one, the knots are gonna take up a little bit of space, right? So you have to accommodate for each little knot in your overall measurement, but you also are going to need, straighten my needle back out here. You're also gonna to need to accommodate for your clasp. And for our project, we're using a combination of the button and the leather, and that's probably gonna take up about two inches. So you need to take that into consideration when you're making your measurements. We're gonna use this and probably make a knot here and a knot here. So around two inches, you need to subtract that from your overall measurement so that you don't do too many pearls, right? All right, so I've got all the pearls that I think I need and I'm gonna bring those down. Now I'm not gonna come all the way down to my little bead tip down here, but I'm pretty close, okay? I'm, I'm a few inches away, 10 inches, something like that from the end. Now we're gonna do our knots and we're gonna do one pearl at a time. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, a couple of things here. When I show you how to do this, you really do have to follow these steps because if you don't, you're gonna run into trouble. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna take one pearl and I'm gonna bring it all the way down right up next to my bead tip, okay? All of my beads and the rest of my silk cord are over here to my left because I'm right-handed. If you are the opposite and you're left-handed, you wanna keep all of your pearls and your thread over here to the right, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fingers and our pearl on our thread. I'm gonna take my two fingers and I'm gonna take that cord 
I'm going to grab it with my thumb right up against the side of my index finger just to hold on to it. Okay. I'm going to wrap around my two fingers all the way around. Okay. So that I meet up again where my thumb and my, my index finger are. I'm going to take this pearl and see that loop that we made. I'm going to take the pearl and I'm going to drop it down into that loop. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in the knotter tool. And this is where things get really, really important. Notice the bend that is in that curve that's in the needle on the knotter tool, okay? That curve needs to match up with the V in your fingers, right? This is a very slight V. It's just very, very slight, but it still makes a V, right? You want that V to be facing the same direction as the V in your fingers that are holding your loop. That way, you know you're always coming at the work with the tool in the right direction. What you wanna do is you wanna take that needle, you want to come back here, so not in front of the work, behind the work, and you want to hook that thread going away from the V of your fingers, okay? I put my finger on the top of the needle just to hold my cord, and then you want to pull, and that's gonna pull out the slack. Okay, so it brings that pearl right up to the needle. Take your thread, put it through the yoke. That's that other little V here, lots of Vs in this project, but put it in the V in the tool. Okay, now, uh-oh, <laughs> let's put it back on the tool real quick. That's why I always hold it on there with my finger, okay? Now we want to pull with our left hand and with our right hand, we're going to see how I'm pushing up with the tool. I'm gonna push up and that's gonna deliver a knot right next to my pearl. And there's no wiggle room, right? There's no daylight between that pearl and that knot. And it's that easy. But the problem is, is that if you change up any of those steps in any way, shape or form, it's not gonna work out that easily, okay? So let's do it again. Fortunately for you all, you get to see the whole bracelet done. I'm gonna take it, my next pearl, I'm gonna pull it down right up against the knot, okay? Sitting right up against the knot. Taking my two fingers on my left hand, hold that cord with my thumb just right up against my finger. Make a loop around your fingers. Now we've got two, two pearls on the end of this cord. We're going to drop those two pearls right down through that loop, right? Coming in with the tool, that V shape. Don't come at it this way, right? If you come at it this way, it's not going to work. If you come at it and scoop this way, that's not going to work. You want to come with your needle behind the thread and hook it just like that, okay? Put your finger on it. Pull out the slack. Okay, put the cord in the V, pull with your left hand and push the button with your right hand to deliver the knot. And the knot will be perfect every single time, okay? But if you deviate from that in any way, shape or form, a couple of things are gonna happen. Your knot is not gonna be consistent. You're gonna struggle pulling the, um, the length out of your cord and you may end up with some wiggle room between your knot and your pearl. You don't want any wiggle room in between there. If I do a piece where there's wiggle room in between there and I can see the cord between the knot and the pearl, I take the whole thing apart and start over again because I want all of those knots to be as consistent as possible. So again, I'm gonna take another pearl I'm gonna slide it down. It's gonna sit right up against the knot that we just made, okay? Hold, wrap around my fingers. Now notice I'm wrapping away. All of these things are gonna matter, okay? I'm holding and I'm wrapping that loop away from me. So I'm going away from me to make the loop around my fingers. Now I have three pearls, drop them down through that loop. Come in with your knotter tool behind and hook, hold on, pull out the slack. So pull that pearl right up against the needle, place the cord into the yoke, and you can watch. I'll see if I can get as close as I can. Watch this happen, 
gonna depress the tool, boop, and it just pops that little knot right in, in place. You don't have to do any of the hard work. There's no pulling, there's no pushing. All I'm doing is just pushing the tool up just like that. I don't have to have like superhuman strength in my thumb. I don't have to pull really tight on the cord. I let the tool do all the work for me as long as I follow the steps correctly. Okay, and this is gonna work whether you're using leather, cotton cord, nylon cord, um, hemp, it makes no difference what cord and it makes no difference what beads. It's still the same, same steps and it's still gonna work the same way. Okay, so another pearl coming down, taking my fingers, wrap around to make the loop drop all of those beads down. Now remember, the longer the piece gets, the more pearls are gonna have to go down that hole, right? They're gonna have to go through there, even if it's a whole two feet of pearls, they all still have to go through the loop that you made, okay? Taking the tool, hooking from behind, putting my finger, pulling out the slack. So pull the pearl right up against the cord into the yoke, push the button and you've got a knot. I really, really want to demystify this because I feel like a lot of times people are intimidated by the knotter tool just because it has a nasty needle on it, right? It's got a needle on it. It's a hook and it does this thing. And what happens if I, you know, if I do it wrong, can I poke myself? All of these things, yes, they're all possible. But the truth is, is that once you figure out the steps, you're gonna be sitting watching TV. I mean, really, you know, you can mindlessly do this. You get into a rhythm and it's fun because you're gonna not, you're gonna want to knot everything. When you knot your gemstones, they feel so different than if you just straight string them on something. There really is something kind of uh, luxurious feeling about a knotted strand. I don't know what it is, if it's the silk or what, but all right, so let's keep going. Round my fingers to make my loop. Drop all the pearls through that loop, okay? Come in with the tool, hook, finger on the tool, pull out the slack, bring that into the yoke and push the tool up, okay? All right, we're gonna keep going. We don't have a lot of pearls to do here since we're only doing a bracelet. So I'm gonna do each one of them step-by-step step for you guys, okay? All right, again, I've moved another pearl down, taking around my fingers, drop all the pearls down through the loop, hook with the tool, hold the top. I, you don't have to do this part, but I do it because that knot is slippery. And sometimes if I'm pulling out a lot of slack, it'll slide the whole thing off. And sometimes you can't get the, your needle back in the, in the knot that you've made, okay? I'm putting it into the yoke and pushing the button. You see how that happens and how close it gets that knot? It's pretty awesome. Okay. Next, drop a pearl down. Two fingers, hold with your thumb, wrap around your fingers going away from you. Drop all the pearls through the loop that you made. Come in with your tool. The V of the hook is the same as the V in your fingers. Go from behind to hook the thread, pull out the slack into the yoke and push. And you'll see, see how consistent every single knot is. There's no daylight in between those, right? And that's exactly what I want. I don't want those pearls to wiggle around on that thread. I want them to sit just like that, nice and secure. Okay, gonna drop another pearl down. Two fingers, wrap around, drop all the pearls through the loop. Hook, pull out the slack into the yoke, push, and it's delivered your knot. Okay, just got a few more to go. Another pearl down, fingers wrap around. Drop all the pearls through, hook, pull out all of the excess cord, 
into the yolk and push. You're gonna get the same results every single time. Okay. Here's another one, round and drop down. Getting a little longer strand here. So there's a little bit more to put through the hole, but still completely doable. Hook, pulling out into the yolk and deliver that knot. Okay. Got about six more pearls to go, and then we'll double check to see if the length is going to be what we want. I'm going to drop all those down from behind and hook out into the yolk and deliver the knot. Okay. Drop down, hook into the yolk and deliver the knot. Okay, next one. It is very zen. Someone in the comments said <laughs> nodding, hand nodding is very zen. It is, it is. You kind of get into a rhythm with it and um, you know, like I said, it, it becomes kind of, it's, it's definitely very rhythmic, but you, you kind of get into like, a, you know, a meditative state, I guess, uh, meditative, if you will state, uh, or you just kind of tend to zone out because at, at one point it becomes just kind of a muscle memory. It's just repetition over and over and over again. And <clears throat> it's really cool to be able to create something so beautiful as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing more beautiful than knotted pearls. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just classic, you know, um, but to create something like that with very little effort on your part is pretty awesome. You know, it definitely would put pearls, not necessarily instant gratification jewelry, but I'm getting, you know, it's right up there with easy to create and pretty quick, uh, depending on how long of a strand you need. Right. All right, hook, pull out the slack into the yolk and deliver the knot. We've got two more and we're gonna check our length. I think we'll have just the right amount for our bracelet. Okay, so again, my, I'm using my, these three fingers are the three fingers doing all the work. Okay, I'm gonna take the cord, I just push it right up against my finger with my thumb loop around those two fingers away from myself, all those pearls, drop them down through the loop I just made, hook with the tool, pull out the slack, put it into the yolk and deliver the knot. I said yolk, like an egg yolk, yolk, <laughs> yolk. It's not an egg yolk, it's a yolk. <laughs> All right, now we're at the end of our pearl strand. We worked those up pretty quickly, right? Let's double check against our sample here, our length. So it looks like we're right on the money for our length. Let me tell you how long this is. For our overall bracelet, we're gonna have about a seven and a half inch bracelet when we get done with this. So <clears throat> once we have added the bead tip to the end, we're gonna have almost six and a half inches, not quite. We're more at about six and a quarter, okay, for the length. But then keep in mind, we've got the leather and we've got the butt. So we may actually be more closer to an eight inch bracelet. You can, you can definitely adjust this uh, by taking a pearl away or adding a pearl, depending on, you know, depending on what you need for the length of your bracelet. But now we're ready <clears throat> to do our last knot. And we're gonna go ahead and thread our clamshell on before we do that because we need that knot to go inside the clamshell. Now this time we have to thread the clamshell on the opposite direction because our knot is gonna be on this side of the bracelet, right? So instead of going threading on through the face of our little bead tip, we're gonna thread through the back we're gonna bring that all the way down. And I'm actually gonna treat this just like a, I would a bead, okay? So I'm gonna use the knotter tool to make this knot. Now you don't have to. You can do an overhanded knot and use a beading all to get that knot right down into the bead, 
tip if you want to, but I'm going to treat mine uh, the same way I would a bead and I'm just going to be very, very careful. So I'm going to take the same threads, same steps. I'm going to go around my fingers to make a loop, drop all of that down. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna come in with my knotter tool. Now this time, because I'm working with a weird little different, different size, different shape, right? Than a bead, I gotta be a little bit careful. So I'm gonna be <clears throat> very slow and deliberate about what I'm doing here. So I've pulled that down into what's gonna be inside. It's kind of hard to see that little bead tip, right? I'm gonna put <clears throat> same steps, right? I'm gonna put it into the yoke of the tool and I'm going to deliver that knot. I'm gonna go slow. And that'll get as close as possible. You may have a little bit of daylight in between there, but if you go slow, you can get that knot as close as possible. Okay. All right. So we're done with the knotter tool. I'm gonna to sit this over to the side. I'm gonna bring in my hypo cement again. And I'm going to come in and just like we did when we started, I'm gonna put some glue onto the actual knot and maybe just a drop down into one side of that little bead tip. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Okay. And now again, I'm gonna take my fingers to, to begin to close that clamshell. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my pliers and finish closing. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna come in and trim off what is sticking out. Just be careful not to accidentally cut the middle of your your little bead tip and now we're free and I still have all of this cord that's left in fact let's put it back on the card so we can save it for another project because bracelets don't take a lot right uh, we're going to thread all of this back on to our card and I still have my needle left for another project right that's why I don't pre-measure if you pre-measure whatever is left over is not going to have a needle attached to it so I always, I always just work directly off of the card and then put what's left over back and save it for another project, which means that if I'm doing bracelets, I can get several bracelets out of one card. If I'm doing necklaces, I can usually get a necklace and a bracelet out of one card. Just kind of depends on your design. But one card of silk in a pack of four is gonna last you a really long time, just, just so you're aware. Okay. So now we need to come and close up the loop of our bead tip. We're gonna do that just like we did with the first one. We're gonna use our round nose pliers and I'm just gonna roll that into a little loop. Okay, just like so. Now I've got two loops on either end. Now we're ready to attach everything to the rest of our design. So we've got our bracelet, or I'm sorry, our button. We've got about 12 inches of leather and I've got some jump rings, okay? So let's do, let's do the button first. I'm just gonna use a four millimeter and a six millimeter jump ring to attach to the shank on our button. I'm gonna use the four millimeter first. So I'm just gonna open that with two pairs of pliers. I'm gonna hook that on to the shank. I'm gonna go ahead and close that back. Okay, I'm gonna open up a six millimeter jump ring, twist. I'm gonna hook that to that four millimeter jump ring. Okay, and then before I close that, I'm gonna hook this to one of the loops on the end of my bracelet and close that back. So now we have our button. Okay. And the last thing we wanna do is add our ring and our leather. I almost forgot the, this uh, ring part here. Don't wanna leave that out because I love to add charms and extra dangles and movement to my designs. So 
I'm gonna take this charm off of the card here. Okay. And let's see, Got a, there's already a jump ring on here. In fact, I think the little rings come with a couple of jump rings. I'm just gonna use the jump ring that's already on here. Open that up and I'm gonna thread my charm onto it. Okay. I'm gonna attach those together with a six millimeter jump ring. So to the end of my bracelet, onto my decorative ring. Now, why the decorative ring? Just for decoration, of course, exactly why it's called a decorative ring. <laughs> Just for decoration. It's an opportunity in your design, right? Let's turn it around here so that it makes a little bit more sense, but it's just an added little decoration to your design. You can add personalized charms here. You don't have to do this part at all. You can go from jump ring directly to leather and leave this part out, but this does give you an opportunity to personalize, right? You can put whatever kind of personalized charms here. You can do little beaded pieces if you want to. Uh, it's totally up to you. You can do a smaller ring, a larger ring. It's just, it's just a design choice, but I like it because if you're going to give it as a gift, you can put a personalized charm, something that really speaks to the person that you're going to give it to, right? All right, so the very last thing we want to do is we want to take our piece of leather cord. We've got about 12 inches of cord. I'm going to hook this on to our ring here, and I'm going to bring the two ends together, find the middle. Okay. And now when I have the middle, I've got it pinched here, I'm gonna tie an overhanded knot. That's just gonna secure the leather to the ring. I'm gonna tighten that knot down. Okay, now we wanna make a, an opening for our button. And so we're just gonna tie another knot and that's gonna leave us a little buttonhole for our button. But we need to be sure that before we tie our knot that we've got enough room to accommodate our button, right? So do a little measuring here. We're gonna slide our button between our two pieces of cord and then just kind of hold with our finger. And I know that this is where the, uh, the next knot is gonna go and I've got a big enough opening here for my button. So in that spot, take my leather again, tie another overhanded knot and pull that down. And before I tighten it all the way, I'm just gonna lay it across just to kind of double check, make sure that I didn't deviate from that spot that I picked out and pre-measured, right? And that looks pretty good. All right, now the last thing to do is just to trim off any of the excess leather that you want. You can leave these long if you want to. You can use these as an opportunity to thread on a large hole bead and tie another knot. And you've got a whole nother element to this. Um, but I'm gonna trim mine a little, a little bit shorter than this. So as far as the leather is concerned, if you wanna use something like the faux suede lace or if you wanna use anything different at all, you absolutely can. You don't have to use round leather cord for this. So please feel free to, um, use whatever kind of cording for this part you want to use. I am just partial to the way that the leather and the and the pearls look together. There's something kind of cool to me about the elegance of the pearl, but the rugged, ruggedness of the leather that makes this a piece that you can dress up or dress down. And I don't know why it is that the leather does that, but in my opinion, that's, that's kind of why I, ch I chose that, but you can do whatever you want to here. But now you can see we have a button clasp so there's no other hardware involved here we've got a, a cool charm we've got a cool button you can pick out whatever kind of button you want to use but then you have the elegance and the class of the knotted pearls and you can't go wrong with that right and what's cool is michael's has pearls in a lot of different colors so you can get navy blue pearls you can get um you know peach colored pearls a lot of different choices. So you really can kind of customize this design. You don't have to stick with white pearls. If you want to go with a color, you totally can. But I hope that you guys have enjoyed that. I, I think that pearl knotting is a lot of fun. And I think that it's definitely kind of a gateway into, um, you know, using your silk cord and the knotting tool to knot other things other than just pearls or using, you know, a different stringing material. So um, yeah, 
hope you guys have enjoyed that. I'm gonna turn you around and we'll say our goodbyes for the day. If there are any questions that I missed? Kelly, did you happen to see any questions that were super important that I missed? If not. Oh, I, I think you, it's so funny, Sarah. Someone would ask a question and then you would at the same time go over the answer. I tried. I tried. <laughs> so that's good. That's good news. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, as always, if you don't, I'm just going to show this to you from a different direction. Um, sometimes it helps to see it when it's not laying flat. So you can kind of get an idea of the sizing of, of the elements here. But if you guys have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You guys, um, you can reach me through the Michaels website. You can reach me through uh, Beetle On. You can reach me through just Google me. <laughs> If you've got any questions, um, and the same with Meredith Roddy as well with Beetle On, um, she is also fantastic at pearl knotting. So any questions that you guys have, don't hesitate to reach out. And of course, if you recreate this project, post it with hashtag Make It With Michaels or hashtag Beetle On. We love to see what you guys are doing and the projects that you are creating. So. Thank you guys so much for joining me this Saturday. I hope that you've enjoyed this class. I will be back with you guys soon with another fun project. But until then, have a wonderful weekend and beginning of your new week. Bye, guys. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Bye.